Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about bad code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I just started working for a company as a software engineer, but the existing code base is really badly written. How should I proceed? Well, uh, you're gonna have, well, I suppose the same way you would have to proceed if it was really well written. Now that's easy for me to say because it's in reality it's actually much more tricky than that. Uh, so when you first start at a new company, I will tell you that you should at the very least. There is a way of doing things. And when I say there's a way of doing things, I mean that uh, it's really tricky for you to figure out what what conventions you should follow and what you should not follow. And uh, as a concrete example, literally everybody is going to ask you about testing because it's the biggest thing for everybody, for every practically every company. And in all the learning materials and all the th people, they all the seniors you could possibly ask, etc., etc. They're going to ask you, tell you about testing and how important testing is, etc., etc. Quality is a factor for us. We're all about that. And sure, everybody talks about it. The reality is that it's actually really hard to determine what level of testing you should be doing in any given company. Because in one company they have they might have very strict rules around testing, like very uh, high emphasis on that. Uh, but as everybody who writes tests knows, that comes at the expense of velocity, like how fast can you ship something like here and now? Because it takes more time to write the tests. Long term, that like uh, that's a different story. But short term, it's definitely an investment. And in some companies, like the developers don't really have any like they don't have a culture around quality and testing and things like that they do maybe a few bit of it but not to the same extent right and so if you're dealing with a badly written code base you're like whether or not you fix quote unquote the problem uh, or not really comes down to figuring out what is going to keep you in the company this is like this is uh, I, I'm just gonna this is as honest as I can be with you and I promise you that no one has probably said I, I'm pretty sure nobody's ever said this to you ever before uh, if you're like a if you if you're just getting into software and development I've never heard anybody say this but uh, if you deal with a really shitty system as a new software developer, you might feel, and you've been told this, of course, that it is your responsibility to make this a less shitty system. And yes, in theory, that is absolutely true. It is, in conceptually, that is the thing that you should be doing. You should be doing the boy scouting thing, right? The problem is that if the circumstances at your job doesn't allow you to do that, you can get fired for trying. Let me just elaborate on that a little bit. So think of this as being a carpenter or being someone who is trying to say build a building or like you fix a building or something like that. If your customer comes to you and says, hey, I want to have a second story or whatever, like they want to add another story or like a small shed or something next to their house. And the th when you get to that project, like this house is complete shit. It's basically like the it's rotten or like it's falling apart, and they want you to build a second story on the thing. Uh, the craftsman in you might go, well, I should re like I mean this is really really bad. We should really fix this house. I mean it's gonna collapse. The thing is that if you if you start doing that, your customer might actually be really upset with you because they can't either they don't like they don't see the problem or they can't afford uh, like to pay you to do that thing like in terms of money or time or whatever they just want you to add another story uh, to to their building and in the code base it's the same thing if they have a really really shitty system and 
they are accustomed to this shitty system being the way it is or like yeah, that you should deliver in a certain amount of time if you sit down and say hey this is really shit we should refactor it because this is like the most common thing ever guys uh, you have no uh, literally every single person uh, you work with if you if you're the senior who comes in through the doors and sit down and uh, it, it's almost always the case at the very least that someone's going to say this part of the code is really ugly we should fix it yes we should fix it. We should always fix it. We should fix everything. The problem is that that doesn't usually happen. And it's not because we can't fix it. It is because we have other priorities or people don't value the system or like there, there, there are so many factors that that ends in this one simple truth. And that is that if you have a shitty system, fixing it is going to in many cases be a very unpopular thing for you to do you can't do it alone because if you're the only one who's doing it you are risking your own position at the company to do something that nobody cares about they will tell you that they care about it but what they really care about are the results and if you want to help, like, because what you re like, the thing for you to do here really is to see if there's, if the, the if you are dealing with fertile ground for a change in culture, that is the thing that you should be looking at. The way you should proceed here is not to sat, sit down and say I need to fix and rewrite all of these things. You can absolutely do that if you feel that it is risk free. If you see that there is like like that for whatever reason this is just a mis like this is the situation but they want to move in a different direction. The best thing like for you is to start off trying to figure out if you can set up some work structures with your coworkers. See if you like what level of testing do they want? Like what what are the values value systems here because as I was saying with the building maybe from your perspective the best thing would be to tear down the whole like the house and like rebuild it from scratch and then add the second story but they might not be able to do that or like there may be reasons as to why your customer can't do that so you need to figure out okay so what in uh, how can I move this in the right direction how can I add the second story or improve like start improving this code base and move it in a better direction with the consent of my customer and my stakeholders. That is what you should figure out. That is the most important thing. And in a worst case scenario, they're not gonna see a problem with this thing. And you will be wasting your breath on trying to sell, and this, guys, this happens to, I would say that this is the norm for most IT companies. It is the norm that pitching refactors and stuff like that is an uphill battle. It's always an up uphill battle, almost always. So you need to ask yourself that question. Is, can you even do this? Do they even care if the system is shit or not? And if they don't care and they're not gonna give you the capacity or things like that, then the only, re only thing you can do is to figure, do the thing that I'm very sorry to say that a lot of software developers have to do. And that's just to learn how to roll with the punches. Like just learn how this messy system works. Figure it out learn the complexities, learn all the ugliness, learn how it, the domain fits together and just find ways to shim in things so that they work. Because I'm very sorry to say, you don't need a good system to produce working code. You can work in a really shitty system. It's soul crushing, but it will work. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you deal with a really shit, poorly written code base, start by trying to figure out if the like what are the rules? Like what are the people in your company valuing? Because if you're dealing with people who want to move, like they know that the system isn't so good and they want to do more testing, things like that, this is what I, it's fertile ground. That means that you can now start refactoring things as you go along. It's very hard to sell like the big refactor, the big rewrite, that's usually not gonna happen. But you can story by story try to move things in the right way. That's something that you can do, but don't just do it. Figure out if there's fertile ground, because if you're the only person who is trying to do it, you might find yourself in a situation where everybody's kind of like, why are why is that guy or that girl so slow on delivering and everybody else is just kind of shipping things? Like it looks like it doesn't look good for you. Uh, and in the worst case scenario, and I'm very sorry to say that this might happen, 
the company prioritizes delivery speed, like shipping things quickly and they don't really care so much about testing quality, etc, etc. They just want it, quote unquote, to work. That is the worst scenario. And unfortunately, in that scenario, the only thing you can do is to learn the ugliness or quit. Quit the job. That's another option. Have a great day.